So to have true equilibrium statics, you need two very important things. The summation of the forces, so adding all the forces that are acting on a body to equal zero, in addition to the summation of all the moments to equal zero as well. So here is an example of forces and moments acting on this point. Previous video I just did it with forces, but this one, if, and, I'll, and the reason why moments are really important is if you had a seesaw, you had force one and some other force two, and again you had some force n, n must equal force one plus force two, or the seesaw will move all the way down, like the entire seesaw will move down, or move all the way up, one the two. But if n is equal to force 1 plus force 2, that doesn't mean we have equilibrium. Because if force 2 is the same as force 1, but it's all the way out here, the seesaw will rotate that way. And if it's rotating, then it's no longer static or stationary. So that's why moment must also be, be must the summation of the moments must be 0. So force 1 must have a moment that counters force 2. So, here we have a system that has a 100 kilogram weight on it, or a, a, a ball that has a mass of 100 kilograms, and that is basically a thousand newtons. So this is pulling down, pulling down with a force of a thousand newtons. A thousand newtons. So it's pulling down with a thousand newtons. So then that means that this force that's pulling this rope up, or this rope that's pulling it up, assuming that this is massless, this little slab here has no mass, massless, then force one plus force two must equal this thousand newtons because if it doesn't, if it doesn't, that means it's either going up, like the entire system's moving up, or moving down. So our summations of the forces. So if we were to to add all the forces together, which must equal zero, we'd have this thousand newtons, which is going down, so it's negative thousand newtons plus force one plus force 2. And again, this must equal 0. So if we did a little bit of rearrangement and move this over there, we would see that 1,000 newtons, or that force 1 plus force 2 is equal to the 1,000 newtons. Now this doesn't tell us what force 1 or force 2 is, it only tells us what the summation of them are. To find out what the actual forces are, we have to find the moments that these forces generate around this point. So I'm just going to move this up here. So we have a thousand newtons that is equal to force one plus force two. Now we need to do the summations of the moments. So force one has its own its own moment. It's causing it to rotate that way. So it's moment one. And then force two also has its own moment, and it's rotating that way. Moment. And since this thousand newtons is pulling straight down at this point, it has no moment. So, then we know the summation of the moments. Summation of the moments must equal zero, so, which must equal moment one, which is negative, moment one plus moment two. And again, that must equal zero. So then, if we move moment one over, we get moment one must equal moment two. And if we remember that the moment, moment is equal to the force times the distance, so then moment one would be force one, force one times distance one, and distance one, this is distance one, because it is perpendicular, that's a really important, remember the distance has to be perpendicular to the forces, I, I'm sorry, that's not perpendicular there, Dis perpendicular here, must be perpendicular there. That's the distance, distance 1, and again, the same thing is true, where 4 is distance 2. So 
So then moment 2 is equal to force 2, distance 2. So then force 1, distance 1 is equal to force 2, distance 2. So then force 1, if we divide by d1, we get force 2 equals d2 over d1. So then force 1 is equal to force 2, 4 meters over 2 meters. So just cancel that out. So then, then force 1 is equal to 2 forces of force 2. <laughs> 2 twice as much as for, tw so force 1 is twice as much as force 2. So if we plug this all the way up here, we have the thousand newtons is equal to force force 2 plus so just we have force 1 plus force 2 I just want to re rewrite that so I can show what I'm doing a little bit better so then the thousand newtons is equal to so if you plug this in right here two force 2s into right there we get two forces of 2 plus force 2 so then that is just equal to 3 force 2. We divide by 3 on both sides. We get 333.33 newtons. And that is equal to force 2. So then we plug this 333 newtons up here. We can calculate force 1. So then force 1 is equal to the 1,000 newtons minus the 333.33 newtons and that is just equal to 666.66 newtons. So we found out what force 1 is and what force 2 is. Notice that we needed to know or we we assumed that all the forces were equal to 0 and all the force all the momentums sum to 0. I think I just I said the summation of all the forces was equal to zero, and the summations of all the moments were equal to zero. If these two cases were not true, then this means that this would be rotating or falling or rising or doing almost anything it could we, we could think of. So that that's just a basic example of equilibrium statics. Is that you need? I mean, I'm really want to put push this in. Is that you need the summation of the forces to equal zero, and the summation of the moments to equal zero and this is a relatively straightforward case because all the forces are pretty much uh, y components so none of the forces had x components they're all going straight up or straight down so in the next video I'll do do an example where we have maybe a ball hanging like this but that will be the next video I'll see you there